So the first human trials into NMN have been conducted. Uh, the report is out, the findings are out. Let's have a look at what the report says and let's discuss what the findings mean for those people who are either taking or thinking about taking NMN as a daily supplement. So a non-blinded study has taken place in Japan. Um, I shan't try and pronounce the name of the university. I'll just insert it below. Uh, 10 men were tested uh, between the ages of 40 and 60. And that was just to check that there were no adverse side effects to taking NMN uh, as a supplement. So a non-blinded study is a study where those taking the uh, drugs or the substance, are fully aware of what it is um, and also what dosage they're taking. Also, the researchers, the doctors, are also aware of what is being prescribed uh, and in what doses. So the purity of the NMN that was used was between 96 and 97%, and that was tested using um, HPLC. And again, I'll insert the full wording for that below. Um, the results were fairly unimpressive, but, but this is a good thing because it shows that the study um, was a success. The human trial was set out to establish that the drug is safe and well tolerated at the dosage used for humans. Now, the trial did not set out to demonstrate the efficacy of NMN, um, and it was only given to a small number of participants. The single dose and the short study time was never going to do more than purely to establish whether or not it was safe or unsafe for humans um, to tolerate. And the drug is then deemed safe for further human use. So let's look at the report. Um, the first thing that's explained in the report is any volunteers who um, had the following would have been excluded from the trial. So anyone with a previous history of disease, and it doesn't specify what kind of disease, so your guess is as good as mine. Um, malignant neoplasms, and this is a tumour um, that is cancerous. Serious infections, and this may be things such as influenza, uh, an STD, hepatitis, HIV, or um, MRSA. Uh, psychiatric disorders, uh, I thought this might be things like um, bipolar disease, uh, sorry, but bipolar disorder, uh, anxiety disorders, PTSD, uh, and schizophrenia. Ophthalmic disorders, um, this could be things like conjunctivitis, cataracts, or people that suffer from glaucoma. Also, uh, allergic disorders, so people who maybe have asthma, a food allergy, or um, an allergy to certain types of medication. Uh, and then the final one was metabolic diseases. And it's difficult to, to tie this down to a specific list because people on um, websites list metabolic diseases and disorders, uh, claim one is not the other and vice versa. Um, so during the study, for five hours after they'd taken the dose of NMN, the researchers observed the following, heart rate, blood pressure, oxygen saturation, and body temperature. Uh, urine was collected every 30 to 60 minutes for the first two hours after the administration and also at the end of the study. Blood was collected every five to 20 minutes for the first hour, followed by every 30 to 120 minutes for the next four hours. So on the day of administration, ophthalmic examinations were also conducted. Uh, these were conducted on the left eyes only uh, and were conducted by registered ophthalmologists. Ophthalmologists. Um, and it was only, the, the checks were only given to those taking either 100 or 500 milligrams as the daily dose. Um, the tests were to check the sharpness of retinal focus within the eye, the health of the retina and the sensitivity of the interpretive faculty of the brain. 
intraocular pressure was also uh, measured, and this measures the fluid pressure inside the eye. Uh, meniscometry was also um, checked, and this helps to diagnose ATD, or aqueous tear deficiency. The quality of sleep was also assessed, and this was evaluated using the PSQI, the Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index, before and after the day of the intervention. Uh, the researchers couldn't detect NMN in blood samples. Um, and this was because the blood that was taken before the study was frozen. And it seems that the freezing of the blood may have degraded the NMN. So interesting point. Um, if freezing the NMN caused some degradation, um, was it the freezing of the NMN that caused the problem? Or was it something in the blood plasma that acted as a catalyst and caused the NMN to degrade? Um, this is interesting because in the zeitgeist at the moment, there's a lot of talk about chilling and in some cases, freezing the NMN. Actually, you remind me to say something important for the listeners. Um, make sure your NR and your NMN is kept in the cold. Um, if it's just on the shelf and it's not in a, a stabilized form, then it will degrade into nicotinamide, which is something you don't want to take high doses of, because we've shown in my lab many years ago that nicotinamide will inhibit the sirtuins and PARP as well and, and interfere with DNA repair. What? Really? Like, yeah. the, like the form that's in vitamins? Right. It doesn't have a super long shelf life. Um, that's not very well known, so keep it cool. Wow. Uh, freezer or the fridge. So they also mentioned that um, NMN rapidly degrades if handled in temperatures that exceed 80 degrees centigrade, which is 176 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and I think we'd all be, we'd be pretty pushed to, to reach those kind of temperatures in our normal daily activities. The results of the ophthalmic and the sleep score show no difference either before or after the administration. So that's, that's obviously a good thing. Uh, the only noticeable result was that um, bilirubin levels rose by 51.3% and glucose fell by 11.7% following the administration of the dose of NMN. However, it was concluded that those two changes were most likely associated with the overnight fast prior to taking the NMN and also the five-hour fast that had to be taken after consuming the NMN. So the single oral administration of NMN was deemed to be safe and effective and easily metabolized in healthy men without causing any serious um, negative effects. Uh, no significant changes were evident following the single dose of NMN. Now this is hardly surprising because the doses used were 100 a day, 250 a day, or 500 milligrams a day. Um, 500 milligrams is a substantial size of dose, but it's still well below the one gram a day that David Sinclair takes, I take, and many other people um, who take NMN, um, it's well below what they take also. So the study also points out a number of limitations. Uh, the first one was that this was not a placebo controlled study, uh, and also that NAD plus and plasma NMN levels were not tested or measured during the study. Um, so although this short study shows that taking NMN is safe, it also points out that long-term administration of NMN should also be uh, tested with regard to safety and in the future also efficacy. Uh, so in conclusion, there's been lots of studies that have proved that NMN can be used in mice, rodent studies, um, in the prevention of age-related diseases. But as of yet, no efficacy studies into using NMN to reverse aging in human beings. So the next step for researchers is to test the efficacy of NMN with regard to reversing age-related diseases. Now, there is a study going on at the moment um, at a women's hospital in Boston, 
Uh, and this is into the efficacy of um, NMN as a, as a way of reversing age-related uh, diseases or slowing down age-related diseases. Um, but until that data is posted, nothing is set in stone. This study only shows that NMN is safe for humans to take. Now, of course, there's, there's definitely the possibility that after a number of these studies have been taken into the efficacy of NMN, the re results may show that what happened in the mice does not transfer across into humans and NMN cannot be used or cannot be assumed to be able to reverse um, the signs of aging in the human beings. But we won't know that until more of these human studies are, are conducted into the efficacy. So I've, I've left a link in the description below to um, the report. I'd be interested for those people that do read it to post comments. And if I've misinterpreted what I've read, again, I would like to know your take on what was written and what you believe uh, it means. We all know what it says. Um, as to what it means, there may be different views and I'd be more than interested to, to hear those views. So the good news is, NMN is safe for humans to take. Uh, we're, with regard to taking NMN as a way of reversing or slowing down um, the aging process, the jury is still out on that. One trial is, is taking place now. Future trials hopefully in the um, will be conducted and more data will be made available. So that's it for now. Um, thanks for watching. Bye bye and take care.